It's a pleasure to see you, everyone. President Poroshenko, in his opening remarks, uh, said that it's me who organized this summit. This is not true. It's my wife, Teresa, so please, <laughs> can you applaud for the president? Uh, the second very important message was the, what is this conflict about? This is definitely not the local conflict. The measure and the scale of this conflict is a geopolitical one. And let me just try to build up a story or to unfold the narrative. What kind of impact this conflict has over the geopolitics and over the future of the world? Look, in 1994, as was already mentioned, we signed a notorious Budapest Memorandum. We got the guarantees from a number of states, including an aggressive state which is Russia, of territorial integrity and independence of Ukraine. We relinquished one of the biggest nuclear arsenal in the world. And finally, we lost Crimea, and Russian military boots are in Donetsk and Lugansk. So what happened? Actually, Russia, with this anti-Ukrainian aggression, has been with an illegal annexation of Crimea and the invasion of Donetsk and Lugansk, totally and entirely undermined nuclear non-proliferation system. Is Russia fighting just with Ukraine? No. This is the fight against the free world. This is the fight against the values. This is the fight against democracy. And this is the war between truth and deception. This is the war between freedom and dictatorship. This is the war between past and the future. And too much depends on our joint and strong response to this Russian aggression. We do understand that we are not alone. And I truly commend the efforts of the European Union and Chancellor Merkel and President Hollande and the US administration to support Ukraine and to support the world to overcome this disaster. Which is actually the disaster of the United Look, we lost 20% of the Ukrainian economy. economy. We lost more than 7,000 lives in the Ukrainian economy. The death toll is astonishing. It is just simply because Putin decided to resume the Soviet Union. Putin wants to see himself as one of the key global leaders. This is not the way how to sit at the table as a global leader. The real leader will never act like, like Russia did against Ukraine. So going back to an appropriate response, what we need is Ukraine. We definitely need to have unity between the EU and the US. And we definitely need for you in the European Union to retain unity on sanctions, including on the issue of sanctions. No doubt that sanctions have to be rolled over, as Russia refused to implement and execute the Minsk deal. What we need, we need diplomatic and financial support. We truly appreciate that together with our European partners, we relaunched our IMF program and the Ukraine is uh, to get about 25 billion US dollars in the forthcoming four years. But the thing is that the gap is $25 billion more. And I always insist that too much depends on the fiscal and economic stability in Ukraine. As Russia will definitely change its tactics. This is a new type of war. And I would name this war as a hybrid proxy war. And no one has any idea how to fight in this war. 
So it means that Putin will do everything to escalate the situation in Ukraine using all tools and means. The first one is military, what, what he has already done. The second one is economic, what he already did. The third one is social unrest and social tension, which we are facing today. Because, you know, just imagine, for example, in your countries, someone from your presidents uh, or prime ministers goes public and says, my fellow citizens, you know, we are moving towards Europe, but uh, we already frozen all, so all social expenditures. We shut down all entitlement programs. Uh, uh, we frozen all wages. We increase taxes. Uh, we increase the utility bill by six times. So it's difficult for people to survive, and he knows this. We do understand that this is the only strategy we have, and this is the right strategy to pass all these painful but tough but right forms. But they will play on this. And uh, last but not least is that uh, Russia will try to trigger the political conflict in Ukraine or political tension. Uh, we do understand all challenges we are facing. I mean, we, as, together with the president. And we are ready to reply, to respond, and to tackle all these challenges. But we need the support of the globe. We need the support of the free world. Please do not go, go back to business as usual with Russia. We failed in 2008 when Russia invaded Georgia to make Russia to pay the price. In 2008, in Bucharest, we failed to make Ukraine and another state a part of the membership action plan with NATO. And Russia got this signal as that no one is to protect neither Ukraine nor Georgia, not the rest of the post-Soviet republics who decided to go towards Europe. We are not allowed to fail this time. As this is about the future of Europe, this is about the future of the world. We do understand that the means deal is definitely not the best solution, but we don't have anything else on the table. So and in these times, Ukraine is to enforce and implement this deal. But too much, or I would even say everything, depends on Russia. We have a number of, that's not the preconditions, but crucial elements of this means deal. The first one is to pull back Russian forces from the Ukrainian territory. Just get out. The second one is to stop the supply of heavy artillery, weapon, SA-11, SA-15, SA-22, multiple rocket launchers. Look, they are armed to the teeth in Donetsk and Lugansk. This is the well-trained and modernized Russian army that is deployed in Ukraine. The third one is to seal the border. Look, this is our border, Mr. Putin. We want to control our border. If you want to get the means deal really successful, so these are the key, three key, not preconditions, but conditions, how to make the means reality, but not a vague and ambiguous piece of paper. Uh, just a few hours ago, I got the statement of uh, Russian foreign minister. He said that we are to have direct contacts with uh, self, so-called self-proclaimed republics. Let me respond. My government will never talk to terrorists. We are ready to talk to legitimately elected representatives of Donetsk and Lugansk. And this is our joint task and our joint aim. So we want to hold free and fair elections in this region. We are ready to talk to terrorists only in case if they are behind bars. We have a number of prison cells for this. On the financial and economic aspect, um, my message to our European partners and our American friends, this country has an enormous potential and enormous capacity. 
we are not just begging for another credits and loans. We ask you to jump in with a real investment. This is to be a two-way street. You're gonna make profits, we're gonna make our economy back on track. If you are not ready to send your military boots on the Ukrainian ground, we do understand this, so please send your business shoes on the ground. And we will succeed together. We are very determined and committed to protect our country, to reform our country, and to make Ukraine not a relative, but a member of the EU family. This is our joint task, and I believe that we will definitely reach this target. Thanks.